Hello and welcome to 15 Minutes with Longevity. I'm Giselle Wertheim Ames and I'll be your host. On this show, we're going to be speaking to Bev Wilkinson, a postural integration psychotherapist trainer, as well as Dr. Brady Sandler, a chiropractor. And we're going to be talking about back and neck pain today. Well, thank you and thank you for joining me in the studio today. Dr. Sandler, I'm going to start with you. First of all, can we just look at what are the main causes of back and neck pain? Thank you. First of all, as far as back and neck pain is concerned, a big problem that we see is first of all the way people are sitting on a daily basis in one's work environment. Okay, we're going to speak, I'm sure, a little bit more about posture just now, but repetitive strain injuries, the way they're doing exercise or the lack of exercise, I think plays a very important part thereof as well. Okay, so it's not just a question of a back a back problem or a neck problem comes from an injury because I think probably that's maybe a, a common misunderstanding. Sure, there are some circumstances where we treat patients that have had a single episode that have caused their pain and like problems. What a whiplash or a, a whiplash, a car accident, a sporting injury, anything. Falling off a horse. <laughs> falling off, we see a plenty of that, yeah. don't be surprised. Bicycles? 94.7's up. Okay. That type of stuff, yeah, definitely so without a doubt. Yeah, so people who fall off their bikes and do and injure themselves in a, in a single event, okay. otherwise work-related stuff, sitting at a desk, sitting at a computer all day long. So posture is really quite critical to what happens, even before you have an injury or after you have an injury. I'm sure it can have a compounding effect one way or another. Very much so. It really does play an important part as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Now, Bev, we're going to talk a little bit about what, because you are really a specialist in this area and you have quite a unique niche. I think it's an alternative niche, but really focusing on how we correct or deal with posture but I think you take it a little bit more into a deeper realm. Maybe you can just tell your story. I mean you shared it with me earlier on about how you got first of all into your field because I think it explains a lot about the work that you do. Well, I was born with a congenital problem with my ankle and at 14 years old I had a reconstructive surgery done to my left knee and um, yeah 40 years later I was having to have more surgery and so now I have a total knee replacement and a fused ankle. And it's in the process of learning how to move and to keep myself moving. And I've got to my mid-60s now, and I've managed to keep going. Mm. And it's because of my own personal experiences that I got into this, into this area of concern. Mm. And what is it? I mean, what exactly is this practice that you... Postural integration is a technique that was developed by Dr. Jack Painter. And it works on physical deep tissue release work. So we work into the tissue as deeply as the client can allow us to, to work in. Um, but at the same time, we also trained in psychology and in psychosomatics. And in the sense of understanding how, for instance, commonly for us, neck pain, we will be interested in loosening the tongue. The tongue is one of the muscles that gives most of the pain on a regular day-to-day -day basis in the back of the neck. So yes, when it's a chiropractor or a physiotherapist that there is a, um, a medical reason, the first people you go to are chiropractors or physiotherapists. I just want to interject that uh, because I think a lot of people don't know the difference between a chiro or a physio or they don't understand what the practice is of which each speciality does. Can you maybe enlighten us a little bit and then I'll come back to you on that because I want to really follow that train sure. of thought. Sure, I'd love to. Okay. Generally, um, physiotherapists and chiropractors, generally we deal with a lot of similar injuries and similar problems and a lot of the way we treat is the same. However, a main premise or an important thing as far as chiropractic is concerned is spinal manipulation. What we do is we go and assess the spine, check for normal functionality and mobility between all the segments in the spine. And obviously doing all your soft tissue work, all your muscle work, but the main thing is to also go and manipulate the spine to restore the spine to normal functionality and normal mobility in order for things to work properly. Now Brady, that was considered quite alternative, I, th I think, for many years actually in the medical space. Without a doubt. But yeah. these days we're getting a lot of referrals from mainstream, if I can say, medicine. And without a doubt, these days we definitely consider... And can I ask why it was considered alternative? I mean, it's really quite interesting. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that's quite interesting. I mean, back in the day, I mean, yeah. as far as it was a new concept, it was a new concept that was developed and people didn't really understand and really didn't see the benefits as far as chiropractic okay. is concerned. And only with time, once research was done and people could actually see the benefits and how well people actually respond to chiropractic manipulation, are they able to see and understand that it actually does work. Okay. Coming back to you then. So the work that you do is different. But in some ways, probably, there's some overlap, so it surely must be. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. When anybody comes to me, I first of all ask them, have they seen their doctor? Have they been to a chiropractor? Have they seen their physio? Because those are the first line of, a, of, of attention that they need to get. 
What we deal with are people who have been to either a physio or a chiropractor. They get relief, but then it just comes back. So it's a recurring pain and it's an undefined pain and it's a chronic thing. And in those cases, we are ideally suited to, do, to work with them and to help them. Mm. Um, I was, uh, just while you're on that, I was quite interested in the mm. statement you made around the tongue and, okay. and, and that, and I find very interesting um, mm -hmm. how, how that relates. So how do you relate those concepts together? Okay, the, the tongue is a muscle, mm -hmm. and every time that you swallow what you want to say or you are having uh, the tendency to grip your jaw when you're angry or when you want to cry, you're starting to set up a behavioral pattern of repetitive action. And it becomes so unconscious over years that you don't even know that you're doing it. Things like snoring can very often be because of the wind pipe down into the throat and your um, inability to have muscle tone in the back of your throat. And in postural integration, we would actually physically ask for permission to put our fingers with a glove, of course, into the client's mouth sure. and we move their tongue. And after we move their tongue, they gasp and they say, I've never breathed like this before. I've never felt the breath in this way. Just in the same way, the, for instance, the lower back pain, we would check with, have you been your, to your gynae? Because so many problems around lower back pain could be a gynae for mm -hmm. a woman. And are you having any problems with, for instance, like sciatica or uh, things with um, bladder La loss of bladder control, because those are all things that often manifest in the lower back. Mm. But anger does as well. And so you'd also want to know from a person, what do you do when you're angry? For instance, do you hold your breath? Do you explode? Do you talk about the problem? And things like that. Mm. And we're watching to see what their physical body behavior is as they are able to or unable to express emotion, be spontaneous, yeah. and we d deal with that. Okay, I'm gonna go back to the chiropractor. Talking about how we can strengthen ourselves in terms of back or neck problems, what are some of the recommendations, apart from the manipulations, that you would do in, in, in your practice? Obviously, we always recommend to our patients to follow a good exercise regime. Okay, As far as a good exercise regime is concerned, we want people to focus a lot on core stability. So core meaning around the, the core The core muscles core around here. the abdomen, absolutely. Because as soon as your core, your, your core stability is strong, once you're nice and stable, it takes a lot of the pressure off the actual spine. Does that mean we all have to go and do sit-ups? Yeah, absolutely, oh. sit-ups and planking. <laughs> it's, it's more your planking, hey? it's okay. more your deep muscles. Your sit-ups is very nice for that six-pack. However, we want to concentrate on the muscle that's, that's the main muscle called the transverse abdominis that's deep within the muscle, or that's deep within the, 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 the abdominal lining to help provide the support, the necessary support around And are the there specific exercise types that really help with that? I mean, like Pilates? Pilates is fantastic, mm -hmm. yoga is fantastic. Okay. And these days, there's, there's, a lot, there's a lot of movement towards what we call functional training, okay? Where people train specifically multiple exercises, not just specific biceps, triceps, this and that in the gym. It's more doing a whole different variety of exercises that all interlink with each other, which are similar to normal functions that we do on a okay. daily basis. I would like to add Feldenkrais movement awareness to that. Okay. It's not as well known as many, but I think it is far more fundamental and I think one of the should Can top you explain the list. that a little bit more? Feldenkrais movement awareness is a process of exercise which will get the person to move very much slower um, but in sequential following order mm -hmm. and will help the person to um, become aware of what they're doing as they're moving. So it's not a case of just doing crunch-ups and sit-ups. It's a case of becoming aware of what you're doing, how you're doing it. You need to remember that a child when it's born instinctively grips a muscle, but it's a learnt process to let a muscle go. It's not instinctive and many adults today actually don't know how to let a muscle go. And so Feldenkrais movement awareness is a technique that will help you much more to become aware of what you're doing in your exercise process. And then it'll help through any other kind of exercise. So I'm not saying that Pilates and them are not good, they're great. 
but there's something that needs to be added to that. Okay. And that's on a level of awareness while you're doing the exercise. Now, of course, we also get bombarded you know, with all sorts of other ideas around pain relief and, and back pain relief around sometimes it's pillows, mattresses. Um, you know, are these also um, very important and things that we have to consider? I, I really think mattresses is something that's really, really understated and people neglect it a lot. Mm -hmm. People go and spend thousands and thousands a month on a car. However, a mattress, a bed, that they're spending six to ten hours a night sleeping on, they'll go and buy the cheapest one that, that they can get. So a decent mattress, a decent pillow is something that I really, really do recommend. Okay. There are a lot of different variations in the market, whether people want a multi-layer foam mattress or a spring pocket cool mattress. People must find something that works for their body type, but I really do recommend yeah. a decent and mattress. And sleep is very important, of course, sure, in absolutely. that whole healing. Yeah. And then, of course, basic therapies like ice packs and heat can also work to get Indeed. relief. Indeed, I'm a big fan of ice. Okay. If in a situation where there is pain, pop an ice pack on. My ruling for ice pack and with my students is that use ice when it's immediately, when the injury is new. When it's a chronic thing, you use ice pack and heat. Mm. Alternate the, the two. Yeah, but ice pack first when there's an injury. Absolutely. Okay. 15 minutes in every cycle, cycle. of an hour or whatever. The heat's nice, the ice is. <laughs> okay, just in summary, quick tips to really strengthen, have a much healthier back, avoid back and neck pain. I'll start with you and end with the lady, Bev. F first of all, being active, okay? Not sitting at a desk for 10 hours at a time. I tell my patients every 45 minutes to an hour, please stand up, walk around your office, okay? Set up your office ergonomics properly. Make sure that everything is in its right place where it should be. In looking up at the computer. Yes, looking straight yeah. up at the computer, not down or twisted to the side, to the laptop. That's a very big problem, as well as doing exercise good lifestyle, being active, doing the necessary exercises and the core strength. Strengthen your body, strengthen your muscles will relate to a good body. Great. Mm. Bev? For me, if you have a sedentary uh, job situation where you're just sitting in a chair, put a book, a, a books on the ground and have your feet up on, on books because that will help you to keep your pelvis in the right position. So a little stool or one of the really unhelpful things is to hook your legs behind the legs of the chair. Mm. So if your feet go um, behind and under the chair, it shows that your spine and is, is already in a, a compromised position. Um, breathing, um, even in your, your chair, put your arms down and raise your body and do just a few exercises yeah. to lift, yeah. move. Um, things like if you really have to sit still all day, consider a kneel stool where you're kneeling or whether you have the big balls, because when you're on a ball, your, bo your spine is constantly moving all the time. So you're never really static all the time. Um, I would say definitely exercise, um, uh, food, nutrition. I'd say nutrition is a big yeah. one. Always very important in any mm -hmm. healthy Sleep. lifestyle. Mm. Great, thank you very much. Th thank you for both joining me, that was really interesting. Well, that's all we have time for today. Thank you for joining me for your weekly dose of health news.